Good morning, everybody. It's Dawn at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, and today is March 28th, 2022, and next Monday will be a new Chloe calendar, and <laughs> one of the employees is making faces behind Peter, and so this is the trials and tribulations of our new studio, filming Hold on. out in the middle of nowhere. Let me get her. Where everybody else is, I mean, not nowhere, everywhere. She's hiding from She's me. Hiding now. Yeah. Here she hid behind one of her cubicles. <laughs> okay, that was Nancy for all of you who needed to know. Uh, causing trouble again. Rebel rousing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you don't want to be called on the carpet, don't be teasing me behind the camera and making me lose my concentration because, you know, it doesn't take much. I got the swivel chair. <laughs> Today we're here at Meet Me at the Sew Machine. Peter was sick Friday and not feeling good. What in the world is this? Oh my God, don't you be popping that at me. Look at this. Oh God, don't pop it at me. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you did get you it? Pop it? Oh, I did. Oh, did my you pop gosh. it? Where'd it go? That's I was expecting ridiculous. it to hit me. <laughs> it, says, it says, don't point at animals or people. Oh, is that what it says? And yeah. what are you doing? Point at people. people. <laughs> oh, I expected that to hit me, but she kept catching it. <laughs> Just I was bracing for impact. So this is welcome to the, yeah, the videos are going to have a whole new element of I guess they confusion. Are. Okay. okay, meet me at the hey, Looney Bin do they make, instead of meet me at the Soul Machine. Do they make, do they make that, do they make that as a horse? I don't know, but we got to buy one for everybody. No, we don't. No, we do not need to buy one for everybody. Oh my goodness, people, people. I don't know where they're going for. Okay, so Sorry. anyway, where was I? I have no idea. I don't either. Okay, it's Meet Me at the Sew Machine and the Looney Bin. That's all I can say. We're going to do a block from our uh, Schoolgirl Sampler book. We're going to do one this week, and then we're going to, after this week, we're going to start doing two at a time. Uh, a lot of people commented. We're so appreciative of the comments, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people said, oh, two a week would be uh, just fine with them. So we're going to do that. They're easy. They're fun to do, and you don't want to just stop at one. So that's what we're going to do. But for this week, uh, I've only prepared to do one. And then this is number four, and then we'll do five and six, and we'll always end up on an even square. This week, I wanted to talk to you about, I did a video a while back on scraps. How I uh, corral or how I handle my scraps. Let's say I've done a big project. Let's say, you know, I've done a full bed size quilt and I've I had all the fabric requirements for that. And so then after I'm done cutting out all the pieces, I have a pile of scraps. You can all relate to that. Well, I cut those scraps into pieces and I start with the biggest piece first, which for me is five and a half. Some people do six and a half, I do five and a half because I feel like there's a lot of patterns out there that use charm packs, which is a five inch square. So if I've got a five and a half, I can, I can do a little bit more with that. So I start at five and a half and I go five and a half and cut what I can out of, out of my scraps, getting five and a half either strips or squares. And then I go down to four and a half, and then three and a half, and two and a half, one and a half, and then just because I'm a little crazy, okay, a lot crazy, I even do one inch, okay? And I have a bin. I know I've showed this bin before. Let's get it out here. I've got this bin, and in my bin, I just, if I have a five and a half inch strip, I throw it in that one, my four and a half inch squares and strips three to three and a half, two to two and a half, and one to one and a half. Ooh, look at the little babies. Aren't those so cute? So that's how I deal with my uh, scraps at home. And since I was doing this project with uh, Kim Deal, I had just finished a Whatnuts Club with Kim Deal. I just did it on my own because... Um, 
well, I love Kim Deal, and I just did her What Knots Club. And uh, I had made the projects. It's a bunch of small projects. And so most of the fabric is fat quarters or what have you. And so I had, by my cutting table, I had put one of these little bins, just like this, or a little bin like this. And every time, instead of walking clear over, because at home, my bin is not by my ironing board, and I have to walk over and put stuff in my bin. So instead of walking back and forth, I just filled up one of these baskets. You know, I just would toss. So most of the pieces were really little, uh, two and a half or smaller. All those, uh, all those quilts were really tiny pieces. And so I just kept throwing them. And so then one afternoon, I decided that I didn't really want to sew, that I just kind of wanted to play with my fabric. So I sat and organized them, and I've got them. Here are all my one-inch pieces and my one-inch, and I kind of divvied them up into darks and lights. So here's my light one-inch, my dark one-inch, and here are all my one-inch pieces. Oh, look at all those little babies. I know. Aren't they deliciously delicious? Yes. And so I stacked all those there. So that's my one inch, darks and lights. Then here's my one and a half, darks, lights, darks, lights. Uh, this is, I thought that was one and a half. Maybe that's one and a fourth, because this is one and a half. That's one and a fourth. I don't know why I have a one and a fourth, but I do. Evidently, that quilt must have asked for a one and a fourth. These are one and a half darks, one and a half lights, one and a half pieces, two, and this is two and a half, and then there was this oddball three. So I kind of organized them, and when I was organizing them, look what I found. Oh, my gosh. It was a slew of these already made. Oh. So I could make me some fun oh. four patches. Look at this. Oh. I could make me some four fun oh. patches out of that, you know, and they've all got the same background. So I must have had these left over from a project that I was working on. And uh, there they are all ready to go into another project. How yummy and delicious. Don't you just love that? Yes. Yeah, that's one and a half and one and a half. So that's going to be two and a half or two, maybe. Oh. I don't know. So anyway, uh, when I went to make this block... Okay, this is the block I made. I didn't have to cut any pieces. Peter, are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I went to my bin. Your bin. I went to my bin, and these were all, uh, you know, the same width. So I just went to that category, and look, I found, I found four different corners, because mm. I thought that'd be fun to have... No, I guess I got two. These are the same and those mm -hmm. are the same. Four different blacks, so that's really Love scrappy. That. So see, I just went through my little pile here and said, oh yeah, there's a black, there's a black, there's a black, there's a black. So I found four blacks that would work. And then I just found four squares. Love it. It all came from this, which would have been for somebody else trash. Scrap happens. I'm telling you, it is awesome when it works out like that. I love, love, love. So, that was my little tidbit about keeping your scraps, keeping them organized. This is a wonderful way to do it with these drawers. And uh, so when I get home, I'll put these in my drawers. <laughs> put these in my drawers. <laughs> my chest of drawers. And then uh, I'll have them all organized and ready to go. But I thought you might would like to see how that all worked out. That was so much fun that I didn't have to cut one piece to do this square. That was, I mean, I just was, I was giggling to myself. But with my Peter memory blocks, I haven't made a big project with that. I've only made three little blocks. So I don't have a bunch of scraps yet okay but when i opened up oh. when i opened up my black i know what you will have a lot so, of scraps of yeah yeah well when i opened up look i had just the right size strip already cut so i just cut my squares out of that and look i had the right size of this because i had needed it for something else 
And then all I had to do was go through my back quarters and find four fun fabrics that went together. Now this is what I've chosen. And when I have the strips, see, I just put that in here. Now when I'm done with this project completely, these strips and squares and everything I have left over will go into my drawers. But right now I'm working with them, so I'm not putting them in my drawers. All right. So... <clears throat> when I went to pick out these fabrics, I thought to myself, okay, now, uh, you know, I looked at my other blocks. Let me get them out. Looked at my other blocks because I kind of, you know, want them to go together. So here's what I've used so far. Really limited palette. So I wanted to kind of add, get some more colors in here. And so this is my uh, Pam Buddha fabric. And so I went to my Pam Buddha fabric. Here it is, right here. Uh, this is part of uh, this line, and this is a couple different lines of Pam Buddha. So I thought, mm, you know what? I love pink and brown together. So I'm going to put that there. I love pink and brown. And well, you know how I feel about green. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I thought, well... Maybe I ought to have a little green in there. So I pulled out this green. And then I thought, hmm, man, maybe a navy, you know, to kind of pull this mm. all back in. So I picked out this navy. I thought, okay, well, this just really dominates. I don't like that, okay? Because that's going to pull away from my yummy uh, fabric that I really want to focus on. So I'm going to take that one away. And um, let's see, what could I put in its place? Well, then I looked at this one. I thought, well, still oh, blue, okay. Yeah. Now that's a little nice, I like that. But you know what? I think it just needs a, a little bit of a punch. A little bit of a, I don't know, a yummy, yummy, maybe a cheddar. Mm. I'm envious of Peter and his cheddars. I pulled this. Have you used your cheddar and coal bundle that you got? No, I've just, I've just been petting oh. it. So I, did, I thought, well, I'm going to take this brown away. That's a nice, nice. And then I thought, oh, yeah, orange. yeah, now that, that really makes it really good. So that's how I went about picking my, I know that you guys sometimes enjoy hearing my thought process about how I pick out my fabrics uh, to do my block. So I wanted to share that with you. Let's pick up all this because now I want to revisit with you how I straighten my fabric. Here's my salvage right here, and look, it's pretty It's pretty big. You know, it goes down there pretty far. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my cut edge, and I'm gonna get it below my salvage, because when I go to straighten that edge right there, I don't want to waste all this. If I put it even, and I'd have to cut that much off, I'd be cutting an inch and a half off of my good fabric, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna bring that down so that it's past my salvage. Now I'm going to pick it up, and with my fingers, okay, I'm kind of, my finger and my thumb, I'm kind of moving it, shifting it back and forth until you see this drop. See that fold at the bottom? And see if I turn it that way, how wonky it is? And then if I go this way, it's wonky. Well, what the goal is, is to shift it until there's no wonkiness, till it just lays really nice and flat. Okay, so you just kind of, with your fingers, you're just kind of moving it back and forth and shifting with your thumb and your finger until you get that to just kind of hang so that it's hanging really nice and flat. And then your double, double, double check is to take your ruler and lay it on a line on the fold so that it is nice and even. Let me get this, get down here so you can see this line. So see how I've got that on a parallel line right there? Then I'm gonna walk up here and I'm gonna kind of look at my cut edge. Now it's not gonna be perfect because this edge isn't straight. And this, how 
That's pretty darn good, don't you think, Peter? Yeah. Pretty darn good. Yeah, it now, is. what I could do is I could straighten this edge because I'm right handed, or I could come over to this edge and just cut it a slight bit bigger and then turn that little strip and cut it straight on both sides. So I'm going to choose to do that. I wonder what I did with my rotary cutter. Here it is. So I'm going to cut this the size it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to move my ruler. I'm going to put that on the line so I know that that's straight. So I've got a straight line here and a straight line there. As long as I'm straight with this fold, I know my strip will be straight because it's straight here, it's straight here, it's straight there. And that's how I straighten an edge, okay? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut that. And this is how I fold my fabric. I go from salvage to fold, and then in half, and then in half. And as long as I do that, my fabrics will always be the same width. See that? And so they fit into my container. See, it's the same width. And they fit in my container so nice. So I will just go back here and I'll go, okay, well, this was a brown, so I'm going to put that with the browns. And I know this takes a little time, but for me, I enjoy this part. You know, I'm an organizer, evidently, at heart, because I, I just think this is so much fun to look at my little uh, basket of uh, treasures here and say, oh, look at how pretty. If I need a green one, I can just go right to the green ones. And if I need a pink one, well, look at all my choices. I've got a lot, a lot of nice choices here for the pink ones. And so I just love to do that. And uh, so that's how I keep organized. All I need is one block out of this whole strip. But this is a nice common strip that I'll be using a lot of this size in this project. Projects tend to do that. They tend to repeat sizes over and over. So if you're, if you're cutting out a quilt that is based on a three and a half inch square, then, you know, it's going to be in multiples, like, you know, six and a half, three and a half, but whatever. So anyway, then I'm going to just open this up. I'm not going to cut two blocks. I'm just going to cut one because I'm frugal. I could have cut two and put it in my bin. But again, I'm oversizing it. And then I'm just going to turn that around. If I had my uh, turning mat, one of these days, Cappy and I are going to have a, what's it called again, a Peter? Spin a spin-off on our new uh, things. And what I like to do now, see, is I like to pull that, I shouldn't have put that fabric away. I like to take that and I like to put that with the fabric so that the next time I wanna use this fabric, if I should happen to need that with a strip, right there it is. And nice. I don't have to cut it again. Whoop, there it is. There it is. And I just put it right back in. So, that's going to be my fourth block for my center. Now I've got to decide what's going to go next to what, okay? Oh, this is the best part. Yeah, this is the fun part. I love this together, mm -hmm. but maybe I would like it better if the pink were over here. Mm -hmm. I really don't care for the pink next to the cheddar. Uh, I don't know why. I think there's more contrast. See, I think there's less contrast. That has less contrast to me, to me too. than this. I find that that has more contrast. And then here are going to be my corners. And I really liked how the one uh, we did last week had black corners. So I'm repeating that. I really liked that. So I'm kind of repeating that. Hey, and I'm repeating it with the same fabric. I didn't realize I was doing that. I might have would have chosen a different black, but oh well. It is what it is. There's 72 blocks, so the chances of these going together is not going to be very good. Now I need this, and of course, you know, I haven't used my Peter Memory fabric yet, so I'm going to use it. And I had already had a strip cut the exact uh, width that I needed. Now I just need the length cut. 
You know, Don, <clears throat> when you're going on and on and on about that fabric, I could not figure out why you were so excited about it. Because it's so but, gorgeous. But after doing this project uh -huh. and doing my blocks, uh -huh. I realize how valuable that fabric well, is Well, yeah, now it's because a great it's light. scale. It's a light, but it could be a medium. But it goes with so much. And it goes with everything because it's a neutral. You know, we think of backgrounds or neutrals as being beiges and creams and that sort of color. But I know you've all seen black background quilts, but this gray is just a different beast altogether. It goes with every color. It does it's because weird. it's such a nice gray is a neutral. And so it is such a nice fabric to use as your common fabric. So here's all we have to do is put that with that. These come together so quickly. They certainly do, especially if you have all the fabrics already cut. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, so now how's that gonna be with the rest of my fat with the rest of my blocks? Look at how that's gonna go. <gasps> that's gonna just Take it up a notch because it's got some more colors going on. It adds a little extra spark. It does. Let's go over to the sew machine and sew this puppy down. Okay. Now. So, Dawn, you've been growing on me, Dawn. Have I? Yeah, I was sewing one of my blocks together the other day. Yeah. And I took a look at it, and I'm like, well, where'd my points go? Oh, no. And I was like, I have a quarter inch seam set. I've been following it religiously. Yeah. And somehow, you know, it sucked that seam right in there. And my points disappeared. And I looked at it and I was like, okay. I said, Dawn wouldn't allow this. No, no, I was no. like, I, you know, I'm fine with a lot of stuff. But now that I know how easy it is to use a seam ripper, I just ripped that puppy out, fed it back through there, watched where I was sewing and sewed above that little, you know, where that seam is yep. where the point you know your point's going to be or not be right. and then fixed it wow and, and i it, felt so good to fix yeah, it yeah it felt good didn't it yeah to know. i wasn't going to put up with that type of behavior no. in my quilt heck no heck <laughs> but i had to laugh because i thought about you for a second <laughs> okay i think i yeah okay so i've got my lines back on my uh, machine we moved oh we Dude, did had we moved by last monday yeah, I think we had. Mm -hmm. So you know that I, when I moved, I had to take this apart because yeah. I moved and cleaned everything and, you know, did a whole schlemiel schlemazel. And so uh, now I'm going to just sew this and I, I could do it a couple ways. I could start here, but then when I got here, it, it's not a row. Oh, you it's see tricky. that? You yeah. see that? Yeah. So what you really need to do is start here in the middle. Now, a lot of people are confused about you know when you get your block how do you know how to construct it because this book doesn't show you you know it just gives you the measurements that's why it's so fun that we're doing them together okay because you have my experience to to re re reference how to put them all together so I look at this and I say oh can I sew it in rows well no I really can't Unless I sew this as a unit, and then I'll have this, and then I'll have this as a unit, and this. So I've got to start here and sew my unit together. <clears throat> so let's just pick that up. Four Patch Monday, baby. Yeah, I'm not going to pin. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. i got to take my shoes off, though. You know what I've been doing? What? Pinning. Have you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a miracle. Well, you ask me. But the funny thing is, the seams line up when you pin. Hey, isn't that, <laughs> isn't that exciting how that happens? Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to put that piece. Now, a lot of people sew on air. And what I mean by that is they'll put their piece in, but they won't put it all the way up to the needle. And there'll be a couple stitches that won't be on the fabric. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, and that's what I do. And I get a okay. little, I get a little thread nest on the back. Right. Some machines are fine sewing on air, and some machines don't like to sew on air. So you kind of got to learn your machine.
But what happens is when you sew on air and there's no fabric for the bobbin and the top thread to catch with each other, and it's just thread catching on thread, sometimes your bobbin tension gets a little bit confused. And that's when you get that <laughs> at, the at the back of your piece. You know, your machine will make that yeah. <laughs> noise. And, and it's then game you, over. And then you turn, your, <laughs> you turn your piece over, and there's a big old hunk of uh, bobbin thread under there. Your machine there. threw up on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like a thread throw up. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So be aware, and that's another reason why we do the beginner and ender, because that will hold some of your tension back there, okay? And keep your bobbin tension where it needs to be. So, I always have the habit of moving that right up to my needle. Now, I know you can't see it because my, my uh, uh, foot's in the way, not my literal foot, but my sewing foot. But it's right up against the needle, so the first stitch it's gonna take, it's gonna take into fabric. Now, a lot of people stop before they get to the end of the sea, of the fabric. I have taken a couple stitches on air again, but I'm not going to move this fabric, okay? Because I'm wanting this fabric to hold my bobbin mm -hmm. tension. If I were to move that and then to like maybe it would back up, that's what loosens that bobbin tension, and that's when I get the little nest. So, just a little bit of information that could be useful, might not be useful, but if you've ever wondered why your machine does that, see, now I'm going to get that right up next to the needle, the first stitch, and I didn't move that, so my bobbin tension stayed right in place, and now I don't have a little nest underneath. You know, I'm glad you're covering this because I'm... There's some customers that I know if they started making these four-inch blocks, they would absolutely love it. Yeah. But I can see why it's intimidating to some because if you don't have the proper techniques in place ahead of time, then it can become frustrating. But using, you know, utilizing all these little tips and tricks that you're showing along the way, um, it helps people be able to partake in this process with pleasure. Right. And not get frustrated and have fun doing it. Good point. Yeah. Another reason why I brought this up is because the pieces are so small. Very small. That if you get that nest underneath, first of all, it adds bulk. The stitches aren't pretty. And over half the block has all that <laughs> thread behind it because the piece is so little. Because for the bobbin to correct itself, it has to do five or six stitches. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so in order for it to straighten itself out, it's already sewed half the block and you've got, you know, a bird's nest underneath there. Now, am I going to take these out? Yes, I'm going to make that whole unit before I continue, just so that I don't lose my place here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut my beginner and ender. Now, if I had my project going which I should, but today because it's the video and I've rambled on and on, I'm going to get this and I'm going to make this again. Uh, put this unit together. Let me get my uh, clapper. You know, I love me my clapper. My clapper, my clapper, my clapper. Some lady came in this week and bought a clapper and she emailed me and said, Oh my goodness, she says, I did not know it would make that big of a difference. I did not know that a clapper could make that big a difference. Now, you've seen a lot of clappers on YouTube if you watch a lot of YouTube, which I do. I don't watch TV anymore, hardly at all. Uh, that a lot of people are using the clapper, but they don't use the one with the wool on the top. They don't use it for pressing their seams open. All they use it for is to make their seams flat, okay? My clapper, which it's not really, I mean, it's mine because I bought it, but I didn't invent it or anything. Uh, this comes from a company called You and Me. Um, but um, I just wanted to tell you that this was the game changer. Putting the wool 
and making this the, just the right angle and then making it the right height that all your other seams fall away and they're not in your way when you want to press them open. And you're going to see that when I get farther into the block. That those other seams will just fall to the sides and allow me to just do the one. Yeah, I want to piggyback off what you said, Dawn. They, the, they did a great job making that thin layer of wool thin enough that when you apply pressure, it really presses that seam super flat. Right, right. So there we go. I've got put that back in place. Now, could I have messed it up? Yeah, but I knew I didn't want that orange and pink next to each other. So I knew they needed to be opposite. I kind of remembered that as I was laying it out. And so now, am I going to pin? Well, yes, I am, because I have this seam that I want to match up. And I pull that back so I can make sure that it's matched up all the way up to the edge. Get my pin. Pull that up there. I'm not going to pin that edge. It's so little. Okay. And again, I'm going to slide this. This machine does not like to sew on air. So I'm going to slide this all the way up. And I'm going to take my pin out before I run over it. And if you need a stiletto, get your stiletto out and make sure that this fabric is lined up, that it doesn't, you know, it tends to want to do that. Can they see what I'm doing there, Peter? Mm -hmm. It tends to want to yes. separate. And if you're not paying attention, <clears throat> then it will separate on you and your block won't be square. It'll be cattywampus. It will be. And you know how I feel about cattywampus, don't you? I'm a dog person. Dog wampus is fine, but cattywampus, not as good. Now, Cappy, she's our store manager, and she likes to shoot people with her Nerf <laughs> flamingo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Some people never grow up, let me say. Be nice. Be nice. Can she can hear me. <laughs> her, anyway, her office is catty corner. Yeah. Anyway, what did I? What was I gonna say? Oh, she oh, got new, two new cats. I think you're going on tour. Yep. Yeah, she got two new cats. She rescued them from the Noblesville Humane Society, and uh, Smokey and Copper. Copper. I wanted her to call them Cheddar and Cole. Oh but my no, gosh! No, it was Copper. Did you campaign? Did you campaign? Did you text her, call her? I did not. She had already named him before. Oh, I even saw him. Oh, gosh. That but I thought awesome. Cheddar and Cole would have been the perfect name for him. That would have been the bomb. It that would have been, been the, the greatest bomb. name. Oh. So, okay, now I've got that unit. So now I actually have uh, it my... It makes me want to go rescue two cats I and know, just, Cheddar and Cole. Just so you can name them. <laughs> You're so funny. Don't well, tell my wife. She's been okay. wanting cats for oh, she she's been wanting cats for years oh, and years so and years. See, you can I get just a mentioned set. the word cat one day. Oh my goodness. Because at the barn where I ride, they have probably ten um cats running around. Uh -huh. And they're fun. They're a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. And I they're and I brought mousers. that I brought that up and she her I mean her oh, she ears. Lit up. Yeah, her ears raised well, up, her eyeballs, her eye, everything. Is her birthday coming up anytime soon? I just don't think the whippets, though. The whippets, I think, would terrorize the cats. Oh, yeah. Because they're the chasers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Especially yeah my dogs Stella. would not be happy if I brought home cats. No way, no how. Uh-uh. I'm going to need to that borrow a cat, happen. though. Maybe I can yeah. test it. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew these together just like as if they were a nine patch. Cheddar and Cole. Cheddar and Cole, that's what I thought. When I first saw them, I thought, oh. And then I read her thing, and she calls them Smoky and Copper. Smoky and Copper, come on. How how ordinary is that? Not ordinary. Cheddar, Cheddar and Cole is so much cuter. But I like, I like Smoky and Copper. Well, Smoky and I like Smoky and okay. Copper, because, you know, you can look at them together, and if they're both, you know, right there, you can call them one name. Yeah. Like Smoky Copper. Smoky Copper. Now, see, that's that's not always a good thing because Biscuit doesn't know his name. Oh, Biscuit. Yeah, because 
it, it was Gizzy and Biscuit. And Gizzy's the older one, even uh -huh. though they're from the same litter. Uh, Biscuit was the runt. So uh, we've always called him Gizzy and Biscuit. Gizzy and Biscuit. Well, Gizzy is so, I mean, Biscuit is so confused, he doesn't know if he's Gizzy or Biscuit. <laughs> he thinks he's Gizzy Biscuit. <laughs> so you see, you gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. Okay, so my dog is Stella and Bella. Stella and, I'll, and Bella. And I'll call him Stell Bell. Uh-huh. And the funny and will thing they both is, come? well, Bella comes when I call Bella. Stella comes when I call Stella. And Stella comes when I call Bella. But Stella, Stella does not like Bella to have, to be, like, in my attention. Does oh, that make sense? Yeah, jealous. Uh -huh. jealous. Yeah, so is, if Bella comes over, Stella will use her body and block her, out, block her away. Oh, my goodness. Now, that's how Chloe is with the boys. So Chloe I, does not like it when I pay attention so to this I have to. Busy. So I have to kind of, you know... You, you know, set Stella back a little bit and then uh -huh. let Bella have the some attention. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then let Stella know, hey, you know, you need to you need to just stay back and be cool and chill right. and all that good stuff. Right. But I think it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Gizzy and Biscuit, they don't. Biscuit. Now, and Gizzy, sometimes, Gizzy knows. Now, sometimes Gizzy if Stella knows. doesn't come, all I have to do is say, hey, Bella. And then all of a sudden, Stella comes rocketing down oh, the yeah. stairs. Yeah. Because she, she doesn't, you know, God forbid if Bella... Well, I'll say to Biscuit, when I'm sitting in the lazy boy chair, I'll say, up, Biscuit, up. And she, she, I mean, he just looks at me like I'm some kind of a foolish alien. And I say, don't do it. Don't get up. <laughs> Every time he'll jump right up. I'll tell you, he's just a wacko dog. Okay, so now there's that. We've got half of that. So I'm going to do the other half of my nine patch here. And... Uh, you know, if we weren't doing all this chit chatting, I would have had this block done by now. But you know, the two chit chatting is fun. Two of them, yeah, yeah. two done. Yeah, it is it's fun. Now, next week we are going to do two. Remember, everybody, uh, well, not everybody, but most people that commented said they wanted to do two. We love it when you put in the comments. I think it helps us somehow. I don't know, Facebook must, uh, YouTube. Oh, YouTube, is that what we're on? Yeah, okay. this, this one goes to YouTube. Okay, YouTube uh, likes it when people comment, then they know you're watching us, and they won't shut us down as as uh, quick, maybe. Unless we start, you know, saying bad things. Well, Unless what, people keep shooting their Nerf balls at us. Well, what happens is the, the video is promoted across other viewers' feeds based upon their interests, so if they're interested in quilting... Um, the more comments there are on our video, then the more likelihood it is that they'll be able to see all Dawn's t tips and techniques. Oh, really? Uh, yes, that's how it works. I did not know any of that. Yep. I just show up. You know what yeah. I mean? I can actually look at the analytics and see what what they were watching where our video was recommended. Oh, really? It has a huge um, viewership based upon recommended videos. Oh, okay. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. If I had my big giant iron out here and I was trying to open this seam, well, my iron would interfere with this seam. But because I have a smaller iron and I'm using my clapper, now if this was a big giant seam, I would lay my clapper on there. Because I would want that to lay really, really good and flat. But it's such a little seam. It's going to lay flat because I've used the clapper and uh, pressed it open. Somebody asked me the other day, why do you press open? Well, I like it because I think it adds to the accuracy and it spreads out the bulk. So those are my two favorite reasons. Now, if you do press open, you have to make sure that your long, if you aren't uh, quilting your quilt yourself, that your long arm it, uh, person is okay with that. Because some long arm people don't like, I don't know what it is, I've never done long arming. Peter, you might could speak to that. Uh, that you got to make sure that your long arm person is okay with open scenes. I haven't found any issue with it. You I haven't? did a quilt. And um, it seemed fine. Yeah. Well, I know that some long armors don't like it. I, you know, I just don't know what the purpose is, why they don't like it. But I've, I've come to love it because um, I used to press my seams to the side 
but you could tell in the block where you pressed. Uh -huh, and you had bulk. you had the bulk. Yes, right. yes, yes. Right. So when you say spread out the bulk, it totally makes sense. Yeah, look at how flat it's that flat. lays. It's flat. Yeah, that lays really and good. And to and me, flat. in my opinion, if you're quilting, you're going to be much more successful getting the even quilt on something that's pressed flat than when you have bulk. Yeah, yeah, to keep it square. Yeah, because the machine has to work harder and then not work as hard and as opposed to being more consistent. Man, we're full of tips and tricks today, aren't we? I'm just full of hot air. Well, you've you got not, the tips. Now, you've not been feeling good. You got the tips. And you weren't here Friday to do the ribbon runs through it, and everybody missed you. Everybody was wishing you well. And so Thank we're, you, everybody, we're glad for wishing you well. You're, we're glad you're back. Now, look at this. I want to show this. I'm looking. Okay, yeah. I've pinned where my two seams are, and this is the... Uh, going to ride along the bed of my sewing machine. This is going to be against my feed dogs, this piece down here. Uh -huh. And look what's there. There's a seam. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to pin that because I'm matching anything. I'm going to pin it because I don't want it to move. I don't want my feed dogs to m catch it and move it across. So I'm not pinning it for the purpose of accuracy. I'm pinning it for the purpose of... Uh, not letting the feed dogs move my fabric seam, this seam, over. And I see, I don't think I do this, but I see you're pinning ahead of the seam. So your pins are ahead of well, where they match. Well, because look, when my feed dogs come down like this, here, let me take this off. When my feed dogs go, chuck, 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 yeah. chuck, 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 look what it's going to do. No, see what now, I mean? I'm all, but I'm talking, I'm emphasizing you're pinning ahead of where they where they match. So there's your seam where it matches and your pin is ahead of it, not behind it, right? Well, because when my foot come when my feed dogs come down, I don't want it moving. This goes with my feed dogs. This seam goes against my okay. feed dogs. Okay. So I'm always going to pin on the side that goes against my feed dogs so that my pin helps my fabric stay in place. I gotcha. You see that? Yep. And so that's the way I always pin. I haven't been doing that, but I think I'm going to start doing yeah, that. Yeah, you need to start doing that because if, if I'm pinning here, that just goes with my feed dogs, and my feed you know dogs aren't going to move that you where. Know where I pin? Do you pin, pin right in the seam? No, I pin. I've been pinning behind everything. So here's the seam, here's the salvage. I've been pinning right here. Behind right here? everything. Uh huh. In the fabric. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. The, the whole reason for pinning, uh, I mean, the whole reason for pinning for this is to keep that that fabric from catching okay. in my feed dog. Well, you learned something good today then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alrighty, I couldn't figure out why one of my seams was off a sixteenth of an inch. I'm like, well, I pinned it. <laughs> yeah, but you got to pin the... <laughs> I pinned it half an inch from the... <laughs> from the from the seam. From where it lined up. Yeah. Okay. These are, you know, these are tips that you don't get in a book. No. Because... I look at the pictures. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, there's only so much instructions you can write in a book. And there's only so much you can read before you say, oh, I just need to start yeah, sewing. Yeah, I just need to start sewing. <laughs> I'm not reading this anymore. That's why, that's why going to classes and having the YouTube... And uh, having instruction is so good. Is so good. Okay, I'm going to check that. I'm going to check that. Ooh. Yummy, delicious. I'm going to come over here. Yeah, And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to make sure. I'm going to come down. Move that over. Did you watch the Oscars last night? No, there I was didn't. some drama. There I was saw some in drama. The news, I saw in the news where there was some drama, and I'm like, "Did that really happen?" That really, I'm like, "Some oh people my. thought it was a gag, you know, but it wasn't a gag." Oh, we're talking Yikes. about Will Smith punching. Uh, now I don't. I read slapped. Well, slapped. He did slapped open, is different open, than punch. Well, yeah. he did open <laughs> hand slap him. Uh, Chris Rock for insulting his wife. Now, I don't agree with uh, physical, you know, physical, what do you want to call that? Uh, physical. Aggression. Aggression. That's right. I mean, he could have took him aside and said, hey, man, you know, not acceptable, whatever. 
and ask him to apologize. That, I think, would have been the better way to handle it. But emotions were high. It was the Oscars, you know. Oh, that's got to add a lot of emotion to the situation, yeah. just being on stage, and if all you, those if people. If you don't have Janet Jackson to have some kind of a malfunction with her outfit, you got to have some kind of drama. So there you go. They invited Will Smith for the drama. So, you know, I'm talking about stuff I don't even hardly know anything about because I don't hardly watch movies or TV Well, or Will anything. Smith is a very excellent well, actor. He all, is. I like all his movies. He's fun to watch. And Do Chris, you? Did you say Chris Rock? Chris Rock. Chris Rock's another funny guy. I don't know him. Hilarious. Uh, I've... Uh, I think he's kind of a little bit on the uh, raunchy side, so I don't... I, I Comedy-wise, comedy yeah. Comedy-wise, yeah. yeah. So I don't pay much attention to him. I know who he is. I've, I've seen him before, but I know he can get a little bit... Um, well, just not my comedy taste. So there you go. You know, I'm loving Steve Martin. The Jerk oh, is one Steve of my... Steve Martin's hilarious. The, one of my favorite all-time movies Steve is Martin. The Jerk. So... I remember when I was younger, I watched Steve Martin, and I was like, who is this guy? I can't stand it. He is not funny. Now He's got that dry sense of humor. Now, now, that, I, now that I'm older, he just cracks me up. I know. His sense of humor is just so original. I know. He just has I that love dry. It. Well, do you know what he does now? What does he do now? He travels in a singing group, uh, a band. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's got his own little band. I forget what they're called. Oh, but wow. they're very good. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, they're super good. Did you watch Pink Panther with... Uh, with him? No, I didn't even know he was in Pink okay, Panther. Okay, watch Pink Panther with him. Oh, yeah? Oh, God, there's a line that's hilarious. It is the funniest Have you seen thing. The Jerk? No. Okay, well, if I watch The Pink Panther, you've got to watch okay. The Jerk. All right. We'll compare notes. Yeah, we will. There it is. It's all done. What you got? Got me a block. Oh, that block Isn't is that magic. Isn't it pretty? And you could do a whole quilt with that one beautiful block. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you definitely uh. could. You definitely could. Let's come over and uh, let's look at it with our other blocks. Let me move my lusciousness here. Now, next week, we're going to do two blocks, remember? We said that. We've said it a hundred times, probably. A thousand times. Put my fabric back over here. It's Get a block everything party. out of the way. And uh, so, here we go. Well, I didn't even get to show you I got a new iron. Let's I'm look gonna, at it. I'm going to talk about it next week since oh, okay. we've gone so long this okay. time. We'll talk about iron care next week because I've got a new iron, got it out of the box, and I just need you to know a few things about getting an iron and if you don't want to read the instructions, you know, how do you go about Yeah, because uh, they don't have pictures, Dawn. Right, right. Taking care of your... So here, here's Peter's block. Let's look at that. Um, now, look at Peter's block. His He used the light here. And the dark corners, and I use the dark there and the light corners, but other than that, they kind of look the same. I like how you did the reverse. Yeah, isn't that fun? And then here's my Peter Memory block. You know, Dawn, last time we made the blocks, you were going to do, it was this block right here, and you were talking about, oh, you could do a variation and make an X out of it. Uh-huh. And it's almost got me thinking... You can maybe is do that worth, with all of them. Yeah, is it worth making a variation? Make one the way the book says, and then uh -huh. make one with a variation of it. Or, um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, there are my Kim Deal ones. Oh, I love that. Here's love that. Peter's Cheddar and Cole ones. Smoky and Copper, if you, want, if you, if you so choose. Or biscuit and cheddar. Biscuit and gizzy. And then here's my memory ones. Look at how pretty Man, this is coming this is out. Gonna be a big quilt. Isn't this gonna be beautiful? <laughs> Isn't this just yummy, delicious? Oh, I love it. I love it. Now this looks like it's an oddball because it's just the beginning of uh -huh. adding more colors. Add more pops. But you know I have 70. You'll have, yeah. I have 72 70 more blocks. To make. So I have quite a few more to make. more to make. Yeah. Yours are really reading very nicely together. Uh, you're going to need to use more of this. Okay. You know what I mean? As we go along. I need a design wall because if I could look up, you do need I a design wall. I could very quickly look at my contrast, Correct. my light, my darks. Correct. Because it's interesting to see how different colors look lighter or darker depending upon what color they're next to. Correct. Exactly. 
uh, design wall is is, and you know they're easy to make. Big design wall. I need you can make those. them different sizes. I like how and you made. They're easy to make. I and like then, how you made the one and studio. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Let me think. Studio two. Was that A? A, B, C, C okay, ABC. Studio A, yeah. Studio A. I just used some of that wall insulation pink. Uh-huh. I think it's Pink Panther. Pink uh, Panther. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, and I covered it with batting. I just got me a queen-size batting, and I just hot glued it to this. And you can cut that stuff down to any size, and then you can store it under the bed or under the couch or, or behind the cutting table. Behind the cutting table, wherever. That's you what can. I want to do. Yeah, yeah. You need to. Yeah, everybody needs a, a nice, um, a nice. What are we talking about? Design wall. Design wall. Boom. Uh, can we, 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 need to, we need to throw these up on the design yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah. Be like, boom. See, see how it just sticks to sticks the batting. To the batting. So yeah. Oh, I love that. And when you're designing stuff, you just need you just need to step back from it. You know, I would feel more like a quilter if I had a design wall. Wow, would you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a must for me. Put it on my wish list. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Well, so next week, look forward. I think I'll take all my fabrics home uh, and work on uh, kind of planning a little bit more so I can get a little bit more color in mm -hmm. my uh, Peter memory blocks. But for today, they're going to go back into my memory box. Hand-painted. Hand-painted memory box. I'm going to put all my Peter memory blocks on one side, all my Kim Deal ones on the other side, and I'm going to hand Peter's back to him, and he will be bringing his back every week. Hopefully. I'll bring mine back every week. Hopefully he can remember that because I just put it in my book. we enjoy seeing them very, very much. Hey, get some control over your scraps, all righty? Okay. Have a good week. See you on the, at the sewing machine next Monday. Bye.